B2DNY Real World HVAC Simplified and now in this video I'll be taking you on a tour of this Vertiv Liebert PDX now the Liebert does critical cooling critical cooling if you get a computer room or a data center right this is what Liebert does now can you imagine as a beginner your first day on the job first service call and this is what the client has all right well today I'm gonna to take you on a tour I'm gonna to go into the menus and show you how to view your alarms and how to do some manual testings with the compressor and the fan all right how to also change and temperature and humidity set points so stay tuned for that um, I have here my Libra key right before before these guys merged with Vertiv it was known as Liebert or Emerson right this key over right here opened it up so stay tuned for the tour okay so if you don't have one of these it's all right <clears throat> you can use a Allen key or Allen wrench to open the panels so you see goes in here like so and you have a uh, locking mechanism back here just don't break it okay goes in over there all right so that's the panels and you have another one down here and for the side for the fan access you got a few of them down in the corner as well you see right there over here so you can use your Allen key, whichever size this is. I don't know exactly what size it is, but if you get an Allen key set, that is good enough. Okay, so there it is on the inside. You got your power disconnect, power disconnect switch right here, on and off. And just note that you cannot open the control section right here. You got the uh, compressor contactors and all your other high voltage controls behind here and this panel you won't be able to open it while the power switch is on unless put that in you stick in here you can stick a small screwdriver in here and push this pin in and then you can pull it open but other than that you have to knife it off and then you can open to get access to the high voltage controls down here you have your main PCB all right this is where the magic happens okay real high tech guys this is precision cooling and um, humidity control for data centers computer rooms and critical infrastructures etc uh, obviously here is your hair filter it's a filter all right and if you guys know filters arrow install facing the unit okay and here is your evaporator coil this is a water cooled unit so this is your plated frame water cooled condenser All right here is your modulating uh, scroll compressor all right and I'm gonna show you why I'm gonna show you why I say it's modulating in a little bit when I'm gonna do some manual testing um, this solenoid makes that possible capacity control modulates by bypassing the discharge back into the suction it's a suction service valve right here so this tube goes between the discharge which is from the top of the compressor right as a discharge and it goes back down and connects back into the suction so when this is open 
you know, you're bypassing about 80% of the gas or the volume which the compressor can pump from this charge back to suction. And so it's not going through your metering device and call to provide, provide effective, uh, effective cooling. All right, here is your metering device, your TXV. Okay, I won't unwrap it, but that's what it is. Here is your filter dryer, liquid line filter dryer. There's a side glass right there. The side glass. Here's your condensate drain pump. <clears throat> okay. All right. This is a condensate drain pump line. It was in the drain pump. Um, this is your discharge. I mean, your high pressure switch, high pressure safety switch, high pressure safety cutout. Here is a, here's a thermistor and a discharge line right here. This thermistor is to let the control or the main control board or the main PCB board knows that the compressor is on. All right, that's an alarm point. Here is your suction line and you see it's insulated nicely with a, a suction pressure transducer so you can read actual suction pressure on your uh, display, which we'll see in a minute. Um, do we have a discharge transducer? I haven't seen one. Uh, there is your uh, air pressure control, that, that's a Belimo actuator, and that's going to modulate, uh, throttle back the water flow just to maintain head pressure. So, with that, there has to be a high pressure transducer, it's just that I don't see it. Uh, that to be somewhere here. Actually, this is actually the high pressure transducer. Right. Oh, no, it's not. It's just a regular switch. But if you have the Belimo there, you got to be a high pressure transducer somewhere. I don't, I don't see it. All right. That is a temperature sensor right there. Limit. High temperature. Okay. I don't know what Liebert or Verde will use that. There it is right there. Now this thing is, I guess this, if you have the uh, electric heat version or reheat version, you'll have that switch would, 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 would be relevant but in this particular one here I don't see any reheat or maybe there is I'm gonna open the side we'll see there is your uh, what is this one here this is your fan safety uh, airflow proven there's also a filter clock switch that looks similar to this okay all right so that's pretty much it down here that's all the, that's everything that's down here uh, Let's move on to opening the uh, high voltage controls and the fan, which is an EC fan motor, that's an EVAB fan, is behind here. Okay, and this is your obviously your your uh, keypad uh, display. All right, so let's open the fan section and the high voltage control section. Okay, so here is a side view. All right, so this unit um, guys also have a free cooling option or economizer option as you may. So this section of the uh, coil is the economizer section or free cooling section. So the condenser entering condenser water is cold enough and the unit needs cooling. It will route the water through this coil, the fan pulls the air over it and that's free cooling. Okay, uh, so there's another um, actuator or, or valve that's going to control that. Here is your filter clock switch. So the other switch in the front, that's the airflow switch. All right. This is the high temperature, high temperature reset. I, I suppose that I don't know why they'll use such a switch, but I guess this is a new unit, so uh, that's all the way they're doing it right now. Uh, in the older type, it's a different switch that's in the bottom down there. Okay, well, here it is. Got some other additional uh, common alarm relays and such over here. If you're a beginner, um, this will be, you know, I guess out of your reach. <laughs> if you're a pro, you probably know what these are. If you got questions, leave in the comment. I won't go through all that details. All right. Um, so here's your evaporator fan. As you can see, it's running right now. It's an EC fan.
get a closer look at the motor, actual motor. But yeah, so you know, this is your DX call in the back, free cool in the front, your distributor, the spiders, you know, from the uh, metering device. All right, this way is your TXV outlet distributor right here. See, is your TXV. Okay, equalizer line. You know the deal. All right. So, uh, let me see if, I'm, if I could get closer. Here's a compressor. I can zoom in on the compressor tag. There you go. It says scroll plunge scroll digital. And digital meaning it has that solenoid on there. The capacity control. That solenoid right there. Okay. Yeah, but I'm gonna be taking it for a spin for you guys, all right? So let me get a closer look at the fan motor and then we go take it for a spin. Okay, so here we are. This front panel is off. It was a uh, two 516 screws and two um, quarter inch screws that's, that hold it in place or held it in place. Um, so there is your EC motor, guys. It's pretty easy to access once you take this off. And for removing, you have the side panel as well. As you can see, I opened that before. Um, there it is. Okay. All right. And uh, here is your electrical section, high voltage. I got the switch knifed off, so I was able to open it. Okay. Knifed off. You can't open it. Never try opening it while it's in the on button. You can't even move this one. You can't even move it right now. But some of them you can move it. Um, so you got this little clip, the one in the bottom. But never try yanking this thing open or forcing it open while it's in the on position. Uh, if you want to do that, there's a little thing right here. Let me zoom in again. Some light. You can stick your your meter, your your meter test leads or your small screwdriver in here and then you can pull it open without turning the power off okay um so yeah you got your compressor contactor um this one right here sends power to the uh ec motor okay so a compressor contactor ec fan motor and i think it says it right here main fan right and compressor you peep through those wires and see it all right, you got some fuse right here for your condensate pump for your transformer. It's a pretty big transformer. Okay, some fuses for fuses for your transformer, like your main fan power fuse, and your compressor power fuses, and just you know, pretty simple unit. Also, you got an overload. You got an overload for your compressor. Actually, is it the fan or? Yeah, it's for your compressor. It goes in your compressor contactor. Let me zoom back out. There you go. Pretty straightforward. And here is the main, the main brain, where all the magic happens. Okay. And here's a schematic if you want to become familiar. You can pause the video, do a screenshot, and study it. Okay. Liebert schematic or no no vertive. But yeah, it's a very interesting schematic or wiring diagram. Study it and then you'll be familiar with, with uh, most of what this unit can do. It looks rather simple guys, but it's it's really high tech. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh power it up and just do a quick test mode and show you what it looks like in the actual menus real quick. Uh, I would access the set points, temperature set points, um, 
um, the, the, the alarm event logs and just run it into manual mode actually it's particularly so you guys could hear as this compressor runs or it sounds uh, when it's modulating okay so stay tuned Okay, so we are powering back up and um, just waiting for it to go through its booting or rebooting. Takes a little, it's about, takes about a minute. And you can see on open power up, there is a date and time and there's an alarm because we did shut I did sh I shut the power off while the machine was in operation so that is an alarm level event All right so let's get into this menu it's starting back up let's get in, I want to show you how to access it how to power it down from the keypad safely without creating an alarm because if you shut down like I did just from the power disconnect over here while it's running you're gonna create an alarm okay so let's get into that so the first thing you notice is that it says warning on so you're saying the unit is, uh, unit is on um, this is your room temperature which is 6 to 4 degrees and the humidity is 50 percent this unit However, this option does not have humidity. So as you see, when we looked at it, there was nothing in there that says there's no humidifier canister, harp, or humidifier pan. So this does not have the option, all right? But um, it still shows you the humidity. Uh, there's a sensor that does that. That's your uh, temperature humidity sensor, okay? <clears throat> um, so the fan is an EC fan motor. It's running at 87%. Cooling is at 0%. All right. Like as you can see, a set point is 66 degrees. And your room uh, return temperature, based on that sensor right there, is 66 degrees. So, and if you hit this, you can see you toggle through. I got dew point temperature. I got supplier temperature. And definitely that's free cooling right because the compressor is not on that's free cooling right there well anyways let's uh, show you how to get into this so you turn this unit off we're gonna turn it off go into manual mode and start the compressor and we're also going to change the temperature set points and such look at the alarm logs and such so you will hit this little let me close the keypad so you hit this little Part lock right here in that little corner and if you have a stylus the stylus does, does work in here like the, the galaxy the note stylus it works here so this is the master password the highest level the highest level password is this one okay that's the highest level password you enter so now you're in it says unlocked and so now you can go and you can you have service menu you have the user menu you have the advanced menu so if i if i hit the menu which is right here okay it says user up top right so these are the options available for user and actually if i go ahead and lock this you can't turn the unit off without putting in the password so let's go back so it's locked all right you can see it's locked and uh let's go right here so you can access the user menu you can see that only the user menu is available when it's locked and you can go in the user menu oh, you can't even access that so here about, how about that so when we're locked 
I thought you could have access um user manual while it's locked, but you can't even do that. You're pretty much out of out. So let's unlock it again. So now we're back in the user menu, and if you scroll down, it says right here, turn off unit. Are you sure you want to power off this unit? Okay, and you're gonna go down here and you're gonna say turn off, turn unit off. I don't know if you could hear that, but the, the, the unit went down. And the, the power loss alarm, I'm going to click right here to acknowledge it. Okay. And you see there's a green. Now sometimes that does come back, but if you give it 15, 20 minutes, it will just go away. All right, so it's gone. Uh, this camera is a bit shady showing the screen but the current machine is off so let's go ahead and show you how to access the alarm and event log if you came on a service call and you want to know what had happened why the machine shut down I'm gonna show you that stay tuned so once you hit the menu you have alarms Currently there is none. There is no alarms. Okay, let's go back. Menu again. Go on the event log to see all the history. Everything you do on this unit is locked. So be careful. I'm just kidding. Um, sensor data. Uh, so we can scroll down. We got time, low temperature, high temperature, oh, so there's not much in the log right now, okay, the, the, the power loss is not here, obviously, I don't know why, but it's not, anyways, that's what you look and see what happened with the unit as a, as a history. All right, I guess eventually it's gonna show up here what happened with the power loss, okay? So we go back at the menu. What else we have? This is just the user menu. But when you hit service menu, okay, one more thing, user menu. Um, you can do set points, okay? Um, you can do the fan set points. And you can make changes to that so we're using the return air sensor as a controlling factor for your fan so if the uh, return air temperature is high or far away from set points obviously the fan will run at a higher percentage if it's closer to set points the fan will run at the lowest percentage so temperature controls right so we, we see where a set point is 66 and you can either slide it right or you can just tap on it and the keypad comes up okay so I won't make any changes to that I'm just gonna leave it where it is and then once you make a change you want to save it you hit save and here um, this unit does not have a does not, oh it does have humidity um, set points but you can't it doesn't have the option but you can make your you know set points here as well all right but I, I won't go through all the functions of this unit, so I'm gonna go to the service menu because it'll be a lot, very long video. So I'm gonna give you guys a, you know, get you guys, you know, if you're not familiar with this, you know, this is a great, great deal of information. All right, so uh, let's see right here. So we hit the service now, so we hit the menu now. You can see we got different stuff in here. We got diagnostics, alarm setup, etc. These are stuff that was not available in the uh, user menu. User menu. You know, you don't have um, diagnostics in there, and um, you don't have alarm. You don't have alarm set up in there. Okay, so we go service menu. Let's do. Um, here you can set up your alarm um, set points. You know, high temperature, low temperature, etc. High humidity. See, you know, here you sort of set up your alarm um, set points in here. And it's pretty, once you know where to go and navigate, it's pretty straightforward, okay? 
not that crazy but before this video is ended it's, it's been 25 minutes so far I'm gonna go ahead and do a turn this compressor on and the fan on in manual mode so back out here the agnostics that's where you do it if you're doing a maintenance this is where you'll come and um, the diagnostics okay I'm gonna go manual mode you know I'm not gonna read all of that it's gonna enable Hit okay I'm gonna go to my evaporator fan the first thing and I'm gonna want it right now it's off I'm gonna want it to be on and I'm gonna give it a I think I'm gonna give it a 50% all right, five zero. That's what I want. Oh crap! Press the wrong button. Enter, and I'm gonna say save. And you can hear the contactor just pulled in, and the fan is starting up. I don't know if you're gonna, you won't be able to see it. But you'll hear it soon, it's definitely on now, you can see the status change, it's on, so it's ramping up. And once the fan get up to speed, yeah, so it is ramping up, so once the fan get up to speed, let me see if I can go a little bit higher, alright, let's go to 75%. Enter, save, yeah definitely you can hear that, it's ramping up now, now let's turn the compressor on shall we, compressor, and uh, compressor state is off, I'm gonna go on, and actually, so remember we were talking to you about the uh, discharge transducer. I didn't actually see it. It's somewhere in there because here's the discharge pressure. And you won't, you, you won't be able to read this if there's a discharge um, pressure transducer and there's a suction pressure. Okay. So I set the compressor to on. Uh, I think once I hit save, automatically it's going to turn on the... Uh, liquid line solenoid automatically and um, I'm gonna give it a uh, uh, capacity I'm gonna give it a 50% this capacity actually you see that 51 who cares what you get the dress I might save wait for it no Compressor on. So it did go on. Run. Okay, here it goes. So there's a little delay. 50%. So there's a little delay from when I initiate it. So the compressor is on right now, but it's really the fan is noisy, so I'm gonna turn the fan down. Alright, I'm gonna bring it back down to like 50. So noisy, 51% safe. You want a compressor? I'm gonna let's see the pressures on the compressor. Uh, this charge is at two, uh, 214. Uh, it's going back, it's modulating now. All right, you see that pressure's dancing around. Okay, it's a beautiful thing, guys. Fifty percent. So there is compressor doing its thing. You can hear that clicking back and forth, and it's this solenoid that does that. See? So. That's something that does the trick.
That's what Copeland called uh, digital scroll. Um, other versions, bigger compressors, larger compressor. This solenoid, it's it's all built in. It's not external. This is a smaller compressor, so it's this part of it is is an outside. Yeah. So listen, if you haven't subscribed, go subscribe right now. All right. If you want to get all these good videos, you know these awesome videos. Okay, so here are your values, everything is in the green. There's a lot going this is it looks it looks very simple, but there's a lot going on here. Okay. Pressures. Let me see if I can lower the this is at 20% right now. I'm gonna increase the capacity. Same ago. I, I don't think you could go higher than what the fan is. So the fan is at 50. And you can see every time it activates, it changes to on and off. That's this right here. Wait for it. See that? I'm gonna go save that. Okay. Um, oh, here's the discharge te uh, temperature of the compressor, 101 degrees. Pretty cool, guys. Uh, you got digital outputs. Oh, I'm not gonna get into this. <laughs> All right. Analog outputs. So. If you like this video give it a thumbs up if you hadn't subscribed subscribe we do upload videos on a weekly basis